Hey, everybody, Shanghai Six, front towards Gamer, day one packs. Just walking by this uh, the Connect station, and we saw this. State of Decay coming out on XBLA sometime next year. And who am I talking with today? Uh, I'm James Finney. I'm the uh, creative director at Undead Labs. You go by Finney, right? Yep. All right, Finney, let's talk. I, I don't think there's enough time to do an interview, because I just played a 10-minute demo. This is amazing. It's rough. It's an alpha build. It's, it's, it's rough. But the scope, how many people are in your... In, in Undead Labs? Undead Labs. It's about 20 of us. 20 people. But it's a very veteran team. You know, what we did was we uh, recruited a bunch of people who we knew we could count on, who brought a depth of experience, and let us really work efficiently. You know, I don't have to micromanage what people are doing. You know, I told you, the, uh, the uh, lead gameplay guy on this signed combat on God of War. He's got a ton of experience in shooters and driving games as well. And so we talk about, you know, the philosophy of what we're trying to do, but he's also able to just take ownership of it and roll. And the same is true with our programmers and our artists. So everybody's able to roll and we're able to get a lot done. 20 people, two years of work. What's the game? So we're uh, making State of Decay out in XBLA, as you said. What we attempted to do is try to make the ultimate a post-apocalyptic survival simulator. And that means it's it's big, it's grand in scope. There are zombie games out there, and there are great zombie games out there that are action games. What we wanted to do was let you be put in that situation, the world has gone to hell. How are you gonna survive? Not just for the next minute, not just for the next hour. And you know, we've got great melee combat, a lot of different weapons, guns, shooting, stealth, sneaking around, driving, running over zombies, which is a ton of fun. It's literally got everything. Weapons have weight. Your cars, if they're destroyed, they don't come back. Uh, you've got a, a base building kind of construction, like something you'd see in an old XCOM game. I mean, it's it's definitely it's incredibly, yeah. It's definitely one of the inspirations for us. I think people will, will definitely feel the XCOM love when they when they play this and see it. But it's a action-oriented, while at the same time having all these strategic layers. You talked about uh, damage to cars is permanent. Well, that's true, unless you've built an upgraded workshop, third level, machine shop, specialized it, gone out and found survivors who have expertise at car repair. And if you've done that, then they're back repairing cars, collecting stuff. This is a game that goes on real time, day and night, you, uh, you know, we have the day-night cycle, the zombies are active in different ways in each time. You're, you're looking at, how much food do I have? Um, am I collecting the stuff that I need? Also, instead of going and collecting it, do I want to build a garden instead? Just the whole grand scope of long-term, how are we going to live in this world that's overrun with zombies? There's sort of a strategic world map aspect to it. You'll see different zombies. They're not... Um, really bizarre outlandish out there. We try to be very true to zombie canon and, and respectful of it. But there are things like Screamers, a zombie that has no arms, lost its lower jaw, the only thing it can do is run around and scream. One of those ends up in a building, its moans will attract zombies from all around. And what you'll find is parts of the town starting to get completely overrun. You'll see this as a big bloody stain on your map. If you've discovered it, and if you've seen that, then you know that if you don't clear that out, that means more hordes of zombies moving around. It means it's more dangerous. When you go out to collect food, you can do it yourself. But you also have a community of people if you've rescued them. It's up to you whether you want to keep your community small, easy to maintain. We're going to go larger, try to save more people, try to bring in a wider skill set. When you go out and uh, search for supplies, instead of bringing them home yourself, you can radio in and call somebody in to go take care of it, go grab it, and they'll just go do it. Now, depending on how you've left the world, if there are a lot of infestations, things like that, you might be more likely to get into trouble. Really what we've tried to do is simulate every aspect of the world so that it reacts to how you play. There's a storyline, there are specific characters that you meet, but more than that, there's this ability for you to choose how you're going to try to survive and have the world reflect that. I love that, like you were even saying, like, do you want to have a big community or do you want to have a small community? Of course, most gamers, more is better, but in this case, because there's a day-night cycle, you have a, a certain amount of food, yeah. and each day you use this many number of food. It's like, it's it's insane. This is the kind of game that I think that, like, DayZ, like, I, I'm sure, do you, what kind of what kind of inspiration? Have you, you guys played that much? You know, uh, different people, sort of di different amounts. Uh, you know, the thing that's exciting to us about DayZ is, uh, you know, I think they play fairly differently. But the Not only that, but technically, you guys were kind of doing this before, yeah, Daisy. It's true for anybody who thinks we were copying. You know, we, we announced the game publicly quite a while ago. But uh, it's exciting to see how much people want that pure survival experience. You know, our game has permanent character death. Uh, but it's in the context of this longer thing. You're trying to build up a community and, and survive. If you go out there and get ripped in half by zombies with uh, Tessa, Tessa's gone, and if she was your best shot, 
than your restaurant. And you can level people up. You got different skills by different challenges. Uh, it's crazy. And 15, I imagine 15 or or uh, 20 now. I know, I know you can't talk about it, but XBLA. But it's, it's not going to be a... XBLA game. Yeah, it's not going to be... That's insane. So... And this is uh, this is a big step forward for us. Uh, you know, the, the next step after this is to build a full online world using this. Oh, wow. But uh, right now, our focus is this. We wanted to make sure we were making, even though it's going to be an online game, there's no excuse for it not to be an amazing moment-to-moment -moment experience. And so that's what we've been trying to build here. And what's the end state? What do you, you're building a community, but what's, are you trying to cure whatever plague's going on, or what? So there's a specific storyline that you're trying to get to. It's, it's focused on survival, and it's focused on the sort of backstory of particular characters in the area. There's a little bit of mystery to it. I don't want go to go into too many details. But what I'll say is uh, whether or not the game ends at that point, you know, when you sort of finish the main story is up to you. You can continue to just try to survive and build your community. And then, you know, as we move forward with uh, DLC or, you know, sort of future, future additions, we we'll want you to be able to build on what you've done. Well, I'm impressed. I, I went by it. I was like, all right, yeah, another zombie game, whatever. But the scope that you guys are trying to, trying to address with this XBLA game of all things. I mean, you're used to two, you know, 2D platformers, you know, artsy, fartsy kind of thing, and then this. It's, I think you really got some there. So certainly, appre absolutely appreciate your time. Shanghai Six out.